human logic to God's logic from information to revelation you see we live in the information age you may be seated where knowledge is a currency and information alone cannot be trusted I'm going to say it again. I'm not saying you shouldn't read your bills or you shouldn't read books, but I'm saying that information without God cannot be trusted. Hello? Or let me put it this way. Information without prophetic insight cannot be trusted. My wife and I were in China. And we were getting ready to go into this. And we saw a place where they were painting portraits. And they said, you know, for 10 Chinese dollars, which is like maybe, I don't know, one dollar, we can paint your portrait in 10 minutes. I look at that information and I say, wow. I'm in China. What a better way. There's no better way to memorize this moment. So we sat down. 10 minutes became 30 minutes. <laughs> Somebody say information cannot be trusted. <laughs> information without prophetic insight cannot be trusted. 30 minutes became 45 minutes. <laughs> became one hour. And at the end, when we saw the result of the picture, For sure, it didn't look like me. <laughs> it probably looks like my wife's daughter for her. If I was not the father. <laughs> and when it came time to pay for the bill, $10 became $365. Come on. Hello? So they did what they call bait and swish. Come on, somebody. How many of you know the devil is expert at bait and swishing? When the information is first presented to you, start to play in your emotional reality and your intellectual and psychological reality, cause you to operate in flesh and blood revelation, losing your prophetic inside. And at the end of that process, you find out that the enemy was lying to you. Hello? Glory be to God. So God speaks to the prophet Samuel and said to him, I want you to go to the house of Jesse and I want you to anoint one of his sons. God doesn't tell the prophet Samuel which son. But Samuel is okay with it because he does not live his life by the power of information. But he lives his life at the speed of revelation. And when he gets to Samuel's house... They bring Jesse's, when he gets to Jesse's house, they bring all his kids in descending order of age. From the tallest one, the oldest one, to the youngest one. And seven times he looked at them and said, not that one, not that one, not that one. Because he had a knowing on the inside. So that when he see what is not what is supposed to be, he knows that because what is does not match what is on the inside. Ah, he is not jittery, he is not nervous, it is confident in his gift because he does not leave his life based on information, but he leaves his life at the speed of revelation. When you are led by the Spirit of God, sometimes you have to learn how to hold on, on to the inside information that you have. You have to know what is the difference between what is supposed to be and what is not supposed to 
to be. You have to know the difference between what is and what is not. Samuel looked seven times at what is not because he knew what was and held on unto his position until the real thing showed up. I want you to understand that when you move in a dimension of the supernatural, you don't always have to walk through the first door that opened. You don't always have to sign the first contract that is put in front of you. You don't always have to be married to the first girl or the first man that showed up. Hold on onto the revelation and the knowing that you have on the inside. Oh, refuse to be subject to flesh and blood revelation and demonic inspired revelation. Oh, there's just about a time when the Holy Ghost inspired revelation is going to bear witness to the reality of what God has for you and you're going to say yes. He was confident in his gift and was not intimidated. He so strongly believed in what God told him that he's willing to hang out at Jesse's house for nine months until the eighth son is born. <laughs> How do I know it? He said, do you have another son? <laughs> and I want you to understand, David being in the field with the sheep was not an accident. Because Samuel gave a decree. That everybody ought to be sanctified. So it was all well planned. But they didn't think that what was coming was supposed to go in the direction of David. So while all the other kids got dressed up, cleaned up, and prepared for the ceremony, God bypassed them. Come on. You got to realize that if we're just up for other people, for you to be blessed, you have some enemies that will never allow God to bless you. But God knows your address. I said, God knows your address. God knows your situation. This is becoming a prophetic word for somebody that have been left out many times. They have been overlooked many times. God knows your place. God knows where you are. God knows your address. And if he has to pass seven people to find you, he's going to do it. If he has to pass a thousand people to find you, he's going to do it. If he has to pass a million people to find you, he's going to do it. Whatever he has to do, he has a global positioning system. He has an operation of technology he knows where you are and he's gonna bring you back uh, from the back uh, to the front uh, come on somebody so you need to lean on God's logic and not human logic. God is not here to be understood, but he's here to be known. And most people in, term, in terms of pressure struggle in the mind because there's a conflict between information and revelation, between human logic and God's logic, between the natural and the spiritual. So the struggle, that's why it's hard for them because they don't understand. God is not here to be understood. He's here to be known. And it's possible to know someone without always understanding them. Anybody marry in this place? Okay. Let's talk about moi, me. I love my wife. We go all over the world together. I know my wife, but I don't understand everything about my wife. Why do you look at me so holy and sanctified? <laughs> Going to the mall and the shop for me means get what you need. Put it in the basket and go home. I am a hunter, not a shopper. But going to the mall with my wife is an expedition of examination with commentary attached on every item. 
Why are you going to buy this? No. Why do you look at it? Just for fun. <laughs> well, just like you like to watch basketball and then play basketball, I like to go shopping. I don't know how playing basketball or watching basketball can be compared to shopping, but that's dealing with a woman. But I am a smart man. I understand that happy wife means happy life. I love my wife, but I don't like go shopping. So because I love my wife, I'll go with her. Come on, happy wife. Happy life. No finance, no romance. No money, no honey. No, I'm just kidding. So, because I love her, I know her, I don't understand it, but I am going to carry her purse and follow her and I find that the Lord developed a lot of spiritual fruits in my life. <laughs> I discovered that the fruit of patience is developed in a season of waiting. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And I came to the conclusion, patience has a root that is so bitter, but the fruit is so sweet. <laughs> Why are you going through the process it's not a happy feeling, but at the end, when she smiles and she's happy for the rest of the day, of the, day the fruit is so sweet. Come on now. I use my personal life to illustrate to you how you need to work with God. The Bible says the people who know their God shall be. Hello? The people who understand. The people who know their God shall be strong. So God wants you to know him. This means that sometimes you're going to have to do things that you don't understand. But you're going to have to obey God. Come on, somebody. Sometimes you're going to have to do things that you do not understand. But you're going to have to obey the word of God. Even though it does not make sense in your head. Come on, somebody. Sometimes God's miraculous begins with the ridiculous. Ridiculous. 